Greetings my goblins and ghouls. I'm Steven and today we're diving into the mechanics of the feeder. Last time we did the electronics and some of the firmware, getting the sensors and motor drivers hooked up, but this time we're doing the mechanics. Getting all the motor mounts and panels and indexing wheels and all that stuff made, printed, and assembled. And hopefully by the end of this I'll have a really jank looking feeder with wires all over the place, but it will index tape. That is what I'm hoping I get by the end of this. It won't be a custom circuit board yet, that'll be later, but I want it to move the tape. I just want, I want to see it happen. I want to believe it's possible. Okay, it's time to hop into CAD and design all my little widgets and doodads and then print them out, laser cut them, and put the whole thing together. I'm so freaking excited. This thing actually is moving the tape forward. Sure enough, just putting some power on the motor makes the tape feed forward no problem. I think it might be just a little underpowered. There are times where it'll kind of uh, 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 like it's kind of fighting a little bit. So I think there's some things I can do to make that a little better. I'm gonna get a higher gear ratio motor so it has more revolutions of the actual motor per revolution of the gearbox, which gives it way more torque. I also can take this bevel gear and make it a little bit bigger in diameter, and that will give me a better mechanical advantage for advancing the tape forward. And lastly, I can kind of grease this whole thing up. I might get like some graphite or some kind of lubrication to make everything spin really easily, because right now it's just plastic parts against each other, and that's not great for friction, so that should also help things a bit. But it still totally works, like it still moves tape no problem. Oh man, oh man. I thought this was gonna be like 800 times more difficult. Granted, you just saw me do CAD for like four seconds and assemble this thing, but it was actually like 100 or 200 hours of CAD. This is like my eighth attempt at iterating through this design. <laughs> so maybe it was 800 times more difficult. <laughs> Either way, this motor freaking works. It actually moves the tape forward. I'm gonna put the film peeling assembly on. I don't have all the parts designed yet for facilitating the tape kind of getting folded over to go into this peeling mechanism, but I can still test it out and make sure the motor moves and the gears mesh and all that kind of stuff. What a relief, oh my gosh. I've been so anxious about this working. It just looks so cool, doesn't it? Oh man, oh this is gonna be so cool. I can't wait to have like 18 of these all lined up, moving components forward. Making circuit boards. Okay, film peeling motor and then getting it hooked up to the circuit and trying to get it to index one component at a time. Whew, here we go. Okay, by some insane stroke of luck, 
Both mechanisms totally work. The tape feeder totally pushes tape forward. The film peeler totally moves film. They both are doing exactly what I wanted them to do. Now I was hoping for integrating them all together into the optical sensor, I could just drill a hole in the back of the acrylic and then hold the sensor behind it and it would be able to pick up the little slots through the acrylic. Well, not really, it didn't really see it very well. So instead I'm going to just kind of hold it over the top. The sensor will actually be soldered onto what is now acrylic. This will ultimately be a PCB. So it'll be soldered right underneath. So this won't be a problem once I order a circuit board, but for now, this is a nice way to just test it. I'm gonna write a little bit different firmware to now account for for this motor that I also want to drive when I move the tape forward and then do a little bit of rewiring. Oh man, nothing has gone wrong yet. I'm just waiting for the thing to go wrong. It's gonna happen. I, I, you're gonna see it happen right now. We're gonna cut to me going, ugh, ugh. I totally called it, stuff went wrong. It's been like a week since that footage you just saw. I spent hours trying to get the optical sensor up against the indexing wheel to reliably get a signal out of it but it's such a small signal, it's only the difference between a couple millimeters. And I had a really tough time getting a, something stable that I could actually make a motor movement decision off of. And even when I finally kind of did, my motor movement was all over the place. The gears I designed have a ton of backlash in them. Gear design is incredibly hard and the way I did it is very much not the right way to do it. <laughs> and because they had so much backlash, controlling the precise position of the tape is incredibly hard. Every method I tried in firmware overshot and it would wobble back and forth or completely miss it or all kinds of different stuff. After hours and hours of this happening, just to put a cherry on top, the idler gear on my film peeling mechanism just came right out. I was super discouraged and didn't end up working on this project for like over a week. I was really bummed this week. <laughs> I was really disheartened about this whole thing. But then two things happened. One, I talked to my friend Adnan. Adnan is an awesome mechanical engineer and I figured he'd have some good advice for me on this whole drive system and he absolutely did. He was like, Steven, why are you doing this all yourself? You can buy a motor with a gearbox that does this whole bevel thing for you. And they have million dollar machines that machine these little gears very precisely instead of you printing them out with your gear design that may not be the best. And he was totally right. You can buy a little N20 style motor with a right angle like worm gear gearbox on the end of it. I have one coming in the mail right now. <laughs> the second thing that happened was I got a comment from RC Dude 10 tc 32 <laughs> Woo, one take. <laughs> RC Dude linked me to a Reddit post of this awesome feeder design that's pretty passive. It just uses the head of the pick and place to manually index the tape forward. But the way they handle the film peeling is awesome. They use the force of moving the tape forward to kind of passively peel the film up it doesn't actually completely remove it from the tape. It stays attached on the left side, but it gets just enough out of the way for the head to come down and pick up the component. This is such an awesome design. I love the way they did this. And this solves my second problem. I don't need this whole fancy gear mechanism to peel the film. I can just incorporate it into the way that the tape is being moved forward. I had these two problems I had no idea how to fix. And then these two people come through with these two solutions that totally solve my problems. This is why I love keeping projects open source. If I didn't share this with people, through videos or talking to my friend, I would still be stuck on this problem. But because I shared what I'm working on and I told people about it and I shared my problems, I now have these awesome solutions to move forward and continue with the project. So I dove back into CAD and started on version two. This is using a right angle worm gearbox on the N20 motor and it has some guides on the top to help facilitate peeling the film up. I started printing the parts out and hopefully by the time the circuit boards come in, all of them will be ready and I'll have a working finished feeder. There was a lot of disappointment for me in this episode <laughs> and it worked great at the beginning, but as time went on and the backlash got worse, but what matters is we got through it and I have a design that should work beautifully. Chef's kiss. But there is only one way to find out and we will do so together in the final feeder episode, which is coming at some point. <laughs> whenever I get my boards in. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I super appreciate all the comments and likes you leave. It means a lot and it definitely gives me motivation to keep going. If you aren't subscribed and you'd like to be, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can check out my Instagram page where I post pictures and updates about my projects way before they come out on YouTube. And I'll see you next time. But in the meantime, check out these juicy, juicy. But in the meantime, check out these juicy, ugh. But in the meantime, check out these juicy shots, juicy, juicy shots. That's hard to say. But in the meantime, check out these juicy shots. man. But in the meantime, check out these juicy shots. And now it's in my head. It's in my head. But in the meantime, check out these juicy shots. Juicy, juicy.
Juicy shots. Juicy shots. I gotta say it slower. Oh, shit. Am I shooting this all in 60? I'm shooting this all in 60. Ah.